Hello, everybody. Kathy here, and I'm going to be doing some creative art today. So if you're new to this channel, um, this is going to be about art journaling this episode. And um, with everything that's going on in the world, I figured you guys would like to occupy your time with something other than what's being said on TV and everywhere else. So we'll do some creative art. Hi, Eileen. So I hope everybody is doing well and you're uh, trying to be creative or um, occupying your time in, in a good way. Because we really want to lower our stress levels. I know this is hard with everyone in the same house for long periods of time. But I find art journaling is a great way to get away on your own. It doesn't have to be in a separate room. It could be sitting in front of the TV. But fixating on creating something in a journal just to get your mind off of everything. So uh, the lower the stress, the better your health. That's the fact. So last week we did this. And this was the uh, watercolor that we put on here. And as you can see, it's got a beautiful um, sheen, I guess you would call it. It's not really a um, sparkle, but it's a really pretty sheen. And... Um, the surprising thing about it, too, was that it went right over top of uh, matte medium that I had used. It didn't resist it. And that was very interesting. And I wasn't thinking about that when I put it on. Now, it did resist slightly on the deli paper that I had put on, but not the um, Gampy paper. Hi, everybody. Good to see you all. Shauna... Janet, Eileen, Jean, Dot, Jilly, Patricia, you're new. Welcome. Um, and probably a bunch of you is in the background. If you feel like chatting, please come on in. We're a great group here. You're more than welcome to uh, chat with us. Um, so it's a beautiful day here, the sun's out, and our temperatures are in double digits, <laughs> well, thank goodness, so everything's starting to come up, my daffodils, and um, I've actually, <laughs> it looks really funny, I should have took a picture of it, there was actually primrose peeping up through the snow and there were buds on it i couldn't believe it <laughs> so that was a great thing to see put a smile on my face hey judy gina so what i thought i would do today i want to do more for my um art folder so this is the art folder and we're just um everybody's doing it to their own style it's no certain way of doing this um it's just basically somewhere to journal about your week or your month um, I haven't done anything in this area here, but you can journal and then you can close it up and keep it private, which I like. Um, being a streamer, I like to show what I'm doing, but I don't always like to show my words so that you can see because it's private. Um, these are just watercolors that I've done in the past and there's a little pocket here that I put in 
I'm using up my scrapbook paper that have been sitting in a tub for quite a few years. <laughs> so we're using file folders, we're paint, whatever you want to do in these folders you can do. Thanks, Gina. <laughs> yeah, same here. Not not too much different for me. <laughs> and then um, these are from Daphne's Diary uh, magazine. And I thought, oh, well, why don't we use these in the book? It's a bunny. <laughs> so I could put a little um, fold on there so I can... Uh, put it in and then I could write on this part on the lines. So use your imagination. There's all kinds of different ways of putting all these things together. Hey Judy. So I thought I would uh, just make a little piece of paper so I can glue it on here, right on here. And then I can open it whenever I want. Hey, Kathy. So really, doing these, it's take out whatever you have. Look through your stash. If you're a scrapbooker, you probably have all kinds of stuff. Even scraps. You could do, you don't have, have to put just one sheet of paper on. You could fill this whole thing with different scraps. And then put a nice wash of um, translucent white on it or whatever to make it cohesive. So I'm just gonna use this and then I can use this as a writing area also. So I'm gonna put it over here. So then I can just, oh, I might have to cut that too far over. We'll make him a skinny bunny. <laughs> Let's see if that works. Not bad. There, and then we can write in here whatever we want. So use what you got paint. You can put cards in. You can put photographs if you want. It's just a bit of visual eye candy for um, basically it's, it's an art diary kind of. Um, if you're not into art that much but you like to journal, well just use magazine um, pictures and just to fill it in. Like um, I've got this other, this is my other diary, um, kind of diary. So I've just put stuff in here, use washi tape. I draw a little bit. Um, this was a painting. Use stickers that I had. Um, you can make little, this has all my days on here. So it's a little folder type thing. Um, February. You can, I haven't added a lot of washi tape, but you can. Um, I goofed up on this one. I put March <laughs> there and it wasn't finished February. <laughs> so yeah, that's March. 
So you just kind of, and this is just an old book that I had sitting there doing nothing. So I may as well use it. And I use a lot of magazine pictures, um, different types of words, sentences, that type of thing. But again, it's something to document your day. And I don't do this for every day. I just, I have another book where I write down something I want to remember. And then maybe once or twice a month, I'll put it in this. And this is when I add stenciling and pictures and drawings and ink and whatever else I can dream up. So it's not a, it doesn't become a, um, what you call it? a dread that you have to do it every single day. It's not done every single day. Hi, Gail. Hi, Kim. So I just thought I'd show you that. And it can be in whatever you want. It, that, that's not a, that's just a paper book. The paper's very lightweight. Um, it could be um, a composition book you use. It could be all kinds of stuff. So, and, th and this is just from more for my last job. Um, it was sticker paper <laughs> and I painted it, took all the dots out and then just put over top of the cover. So it's a little different. The cover was like, like this. <laughs> so it just gives it a little more interest. So do your stuff, do whatever you want. There's no rules. Just if you only have magazines, use magazines. And then that's just jelly prints that I used on here from, you know, we've got tons of jelly prints. So we may as well use them. So today I thought I would like to... I've got this from the uh, Daphne's diary, but I think I would like to try and do this in watercolor and then do the same one in acrylic. And we'll see what kind of results we can get. Sound like a good idea? So I'll show you the both ways of doing it. So we'll do the um, watercolor first. Okay, where did I put that now? Here it is. So I have this already stuck on here. And I'll get my paints. And I'm going to do it mixed media style. So that means I will use watercolor to do the flower, the height, the, um, oh, can't think of the name, hyacinth. And then um, I'll, I'm actually going to try and do some tissue paper to make this part here, to make it look like um, let's see, I'm going to get this so I think I'll put that there. That there. Now, does anyone want to paint along? Because if so, I will um, put the zoom out a little bit more so I can put this in here so you can see it. Hey, Carrie Ann. Hi, Kate. So, anyone want this picture? Or you can take a screenshot. <laughs> do you want to take a screenshot, or do you want me to have it in the picture? Mm 
Okay. Okay. So screenshot. All right. So I got my watercolors here. I am going to draw it out with some pencil. I might have to take Chloe upstairs because she's being a little pest right now. So we got kind of a round ball paper and then kind of lots of folds in your paper we have string now i'll leave it up to you what you want to do with the string you could actually put string on here if you wanted to it might be kind of cute i'll just draw it in for now um then we have the bulb all the uh Paper skinning. And we can draw that up there. That could go there. And then we have, let's see, we'll start down here, I think. So this is basically just as a reference. So if it's not exact, don't worry about it. It's just so that I can see the colors and see the patterns of the flower. I'm not going to worry if I miss one flower bud in the in there. It's just so I can see how it forms. They kind of squish together, fit into one another. One, two, that one comes out a bit. Down there. And you just see the tops of some of these peeking up. Like so. That's the parts of the leaves are there. Maybe a little bit there. There. 
So it doesn't take long to draw it out. Um, you can also take, um, if you don't want to draw it out, that's fine. Just take a piece of tracing paper and put it over top of the picture. You can do that with um, on your screen too. <laughs> I've done it before. If there's something that you want to trace. Paper goes squiggly. around a lot of wrinkles depends how detailed you want it doesn't have to be this detailed depends on how much time you want to take doing it you may just want a suggestion of, of paper All right. I'll spray my pans. Now this is going to be very loose, more of a line and wash than um, a detailed watercolor type painting. I like the line and wash the best, I think. Um, I'm going to use some of the paint that's already on my palette because it looks like to be pretty much the same green. I'm doing... Um, wet on dry just so that I have a little bit of control so I want to put this green in mainly right now and then I'll Go into some more greeny uh, yellow, I guess you call it. And just lightly putting it in. On here, it's very dark. Now this is, the flower is more of a kind of a yellowy green so I'm going to put a full yellow green wash on that I think so I'm going to make some yellow and I want it fairly watery
paper towel. Get some fresh water and take up a little bit. So thirsty brush. A little bit lighter in this area and I can I can remove it by just adding a little bit too I'm just dabbing and then I take that green again but it's got more green than the gold in it or yellow and let's see I think I'll add a little bit of darker green in it I want to go into my shadowed areas, so right in here. And here. Just put a little bit of water on your brush and you can blend it out a bit. Darken here. And we'll do the bottom part. It's kind of a sienna color. I can take stuff out. Dark green again. And then I just go in and put my dark starks in so if you don't have watercolor you can do this with colored pencil pencil crayons um even just crayons really don't limit to um doing something creative because you haven't got this certain um supply there's always a way of doing it with something else. Sometimes that's the fun of it is trying to um, create it in another medium. Sometimes you get some really interesting um, results with doing that. I, I like doing that quite a bit. I'll do um, Even just like stuff that can only be done in um, oil. I'll try it in um, acrylic or watercolor just to see if I can do it. And 
now I can add a little bit more detail by adding some more of that green and yellow, but just a slight bit darker on the bottoms. Look, look at your reference so you, so you get an idea of, you know, is it streaked or is it smooth looking? And try to put that in your watercolor. And I'm going to add pencil on top of this. So I do know, or not pencil, but ink. So I do know there's going to be areas that um, I don't have to worry about. And this, um, this side here is darker because of the sun or light isn't um, as strong on this side of the plant. There still is a, a few, but not as many. Or they might be really thin. Just use the tip of your brush. So it's fun. Just play. See what you can get. It's just paper. Okay, in this part, I'm just going to put a little bit of this dark black that's kind of got a green tinge to it but I am going to put paper in here but I'm going to just put a little bit more darkness in this just here and there All right. Okay, so I found this. I had this. It's been sitting in my box for ages. <laughs> I may as well use some. We can do. I'm going to use matte medium to glue it. brush. Don't use your good brushes when you're using matte medium. Okay, so I'm just going to put matte medium around the edge here. Fairly thick. And I'm going to put some on the paper.
This is experimenting, guys. <laughs> we'll see what we get. I want the crinkles. So you could use a, a napkin. You could use p actual paper if you want, newspaper. Try it with newspaper. There's no reason why it wouldn't work. Just need a little more glue. So I'm uh, where the bulb would be, right in here. I'm going to make it so that it's not um, crumpled. Leave some that, you know, you could have some that's sticking up. You don't have to glue it right down flat. You can leave it so that it's kind of sticking up. That kind of looks cool. So it's 3D. Okay, and then I'll dry that. Okay, still a bit damp, but we can work with it. All right. Now, if you have a string, you could actually put some string on here. Um, I know I do have string, and I'm not sure where I put it.
Hmm. Just hold on. I'm going to see where it is. We have ribbon. You could use ribbon, too. Um, I think string would look better, though. See what we can do with this. Do bow first. Get some more glue. Mm, I think I need the heavier gel medium. If I can get it open. There. So this is thicker. Take all the water out of your brush when you're doing this, though. But it will dry clear, so you don't have to worry. See how thick it is? So put it in the area you want to put your string or whatever you're using. So I want it to be on a bit of a curve so it looks like it's going around. Press it down. And I'm going to put another bit underneath it so it's like double. Okay. Then you can put this on top.
Okay, and then you just let that dry. So I'm gonna dry it a little bit. Hi, Debbie. So it's not dry, dry, but it's dry enough that'll stick there now. Alrighty. So I'm going to put a little bit more color in there to darken the leaves. I think I'm going to add a little bit of purple to this too. Just, I know it's not in the picture, but just to give a little indication that it's a purple hyacinth coming.
All right, and then I'll dry that. So let's do a little bit of shadowing in here. So I'm just going over top of this. We need a little bit of a shadow area where it's sitting. All right, so I'm going to take my sepia pen. This is a um, Unipin fine. It's a 05. And you just want to, you don't want to like outline, you just want to um, kind of sketch basically uh, where your darker areas are is what I like to do. Or indicating where maybe um, two leaves meet, there might be a line. Um, where this, the um, bulb skin is. I want to make some dark areas in there. This is just a really loose, fast um, sketch and wash, basically. I'll indicate where some of these bulbs are by, um, or not bulbs, flower buds are by darkening some of the um, sides of them. So just lightly sketching in. I'm not outlining anything. I'm just making some marks where these would probably go, just to indicate where they are. It's very it's very loose um, way of drawing, basically. I 
show where they how the buds are formed. Some may have openings. It's really it really is up to you how detailed you want to get it. But if I like just doing it enough so that you know what it is. Um, because it's just a sketch and wash. You don't have to get that fussy about it. See some lines in the leaves a bit. So that's what I'm doing. So go outside, guys. See the bulbs that are coming up, or uh, maybe you see some um, leaves even that are on the ground from the winter. Pick them up, draw them. Do some studies on, on flowers or trees. It's fun. And it, it um, you're concentrating then on something else other than all this other business that's going on. There's, there's really... Nothing you can do, but isolate yourself a little bit. You can still go on walks, but take a sketchbook out with you. Start drawing things. It does take your mind off of it. Because you're concentrating on how you're drawing. I can hardly talk when I do it. <laughs> That's why I don't like to do a whole lot of drawing online. Because I'm bleh. <laughs> I don't talk. I get zoned in on what I'm doing. Yes, they are, Kathy. The daffodils are um, up. Some of the tulips are just peeking up. Um, alliums are up. I do have, which is weird, I do have some primrose actually in bloom, which is very strange. <laughs> I've never seen that before. So I'm happy. <laughs> I see something growing. How about you? Are you seeing anything there? Yeah, we we saw, a matter of fact, it was this week. I think it was Monday. We saw our first robin, and, and now you hear them all over the place. You know, that chirp they do. <laughs> yeah, lots and lots of birds. The morning doves are back singing their song. Cardinals are calling. It's usually they're very quiet over the winter. They don't say too much. The only thing you hear in the winter is um, some crows and maybe a few chickadees. That's about it. Yeah, it is still pretty cold here, too. Kind of feel sorry for the little guys. <laughs> but at least the um, there's grass starting to show here now, so... Uh, we're supposed to get some plus um, temperatures for quite a while, so that'll bring the worms for them. So that'll be nice.
so you can just I'm just doing some cross hatching for where the paper is overlapping here it'd be a little bit darker. Really? Your grass stayed green all winter? Holy crow. You must have had a really mild winter. No, well, ours is going to have to be raked or mine. So nice to hear the birds, though. So looking forward to getting into the garden. Get some weeding done and raking. I know you guys are probably going, blah. I love it. I love doing that. I love weeding. <laughs> I know I'm weird. Yes, it did. <laughs> it went over here. <laughs> oh, well. I look at it as it, it put a nice blanket to protect my perennials. <laughs> so they'll probably be good this summer. Got to look at the positive. All right. That's the watercolor one. That turned out cute. That'd be cute framed. Put in a little wood frame. See, very, very simple. Very simple. It's got dimension, see? It's got dimension. But it looks cute. And you could add some white to that for some highlights, maybe. If they get a paint marker or Let's see, there's tips. Their tips were a little bit lighter. Some in here. A little bit shiny. Then a few little white areas in the bits of uh, skin, like bulb skin or whatever they call it. There. Then that would make a cute little framed. Joan. Thanks, Joan. 
So it's cute. See, a little dimension. You could put right down here, Hyacin, if you wanted to. Now, we could try that. Now, do you want me to do one in uh, acrylic? Or do you want me to do something else? Yeah, shadow box would be cute. It's <laughs> not that difficult, guys. You just have to play. The more you do, the easier it gets. I promise you. Acrylic? Okay. So, let's close this or put this over here. Get some paint. So just draw it out again. And leave it up to you how you know detailed you want to get this.
kind of made this a little bit smaller bulb area, but that's okay. Okay, so we got um, sap green. Some white, titanium white. Sienna. I think I'll use some ash bowl from here. I'm just mixing my stuff, craft paint and artist quality. Get my brushes. Okay, so I've got a angled brush here. It's a um, quarter inch. Now with acrylic, you also block in color. And then you add your highlights and your shading after you block in. So you usually will block in with a medium color. So with this here, the leaves, my medium color is kind of going to be in this range here. This is more of dark color. This is really dark here. But this part here is probably your medium range. So you want to block in your all your leaves in that. Now with this part here, um, you could do it in that color also, or you can go a little bit lighter into the um, yellow green, I guess you call it. And just put on a very thin coat. You don't want it so thick that you can't see through your um, paint. Artist quality paint usually is um, more transparent in color. Uh, let's see, I'll get another piece of paper so you can see what I'm doing. So see, it's very transparent. So that's my sap green, as is. So it's not too bad. So we can darken that or lighten it. Um, you can add water to your brush to thin it down if you want, or you can add a um, matte medium or a retarder of some sort. A glazing medium will work. The nice thing about um, acrylics is that you can go into your lighter or darker colors over top of it. Whereas your, um, when you're doing watercolor, you have to start out with your lighter colors. and work back to your darker colors. So, and if you put enough um, mediums in or, or a little bit of water, uh, they're, they'll act very much like watercolor. As far as the look. And this is watercolor paper that I'm using. I'm 
I'm just going to do the whole thing in this color. And then I'll come back and add my highlights and um, shadows. I can still still see through that. Yeah, I got a bit of yellow here. Just going on the bottom of the flower buds, just to give a little bit of a light hue to them. And remember, you can always go back and cover them with another color. That's the nice thing about acrylics. You can always go back. A bit of streaking going down the leaves because that's how they're they kind of have a, a line in their leaf
And I'm just making some highlights in the uh, buds. So it's a very, very light shade of greeny yellow color. So anyone let prefer um, acrylic over watercolor for this type of uh, art? I like both. They all have their place, I find. So now I'm going to go into some of this brown. Just kind of going across because it's got a it does have a bit of a pattern of how it's laid on the bulb. And then I want a thin coat, so more water. And just 
do a glaze over top the rest. Okay. Now I'm going to take some nice dark green. I might have to mix it though. Let's see if we put some sienna in it. It does. That's not bad. I wanted to make that darker, so I put some sienna with the green just to darken it up a bit. And then we go in and add our shading in it. This is done usually around the bottoms of. This needs to be a thinner brush. More of a script brush I need. If you don't like what you're getting, you can always paint over this. That's the nice thing about acrylics. It's much easier to um, correct things than watercolor. Now you could do this with, again, colored pencils. Don't have to paint. You could use craft glue to paint, or, or not paint, um, glue your newspaper on the bottom. That would be cute. I think I'll get some newspaper and see, and I'll show you how to do that.
Ange. Good to see you. I'll just put some highlights on the tops of these. Some of them, a little, a little bit of uh, lighter. Make it a little bit lighter. All right. Get some more of this dark green here. Just want to get in here. Get a little bit darker in there because that's the darkest areas. there. And this has to be darker right here. And a little bit of white up here. That's just where the bulb area is. It's more on a, the whitish side of things. All right, let's 
Let's dry that. Now we can use um, your pen mark or your um, paint markers on these too, if you want. So there's a little bit of light happening here. And right here. And here. Just getting my um, marker out. Let me see if I can use this or not. I don't want to use a pen on acrylic. Um, your um, microns, they will stop working very quickly if you use them on acrylic paint. So it's best to get paint pens if you plan on using um, stuff on acrylic paint. This is a paint pen. This is a Montana, I think. Uh, I think so. So I'm just going to put some shadowing in here a little more. Be on this side more than the other side. So see, it's basically the same thing I'm doing, but with just a few different um, materials. So I'm using my paint markers instead of a ink pen to um, put in the line work. Let's 
the um, Right. Okay, so let's put the paper on. I think I have some newspaper down here. Uh, just hold on, I'll get some. Newspaper. <laughs> That's how thick our newspaper is. <laughs> Small town, not much going on. circle this time. I'm just going to put some glue on. I'll just glue this over top like this. And wrinkle it. Crumple it up like this, like we did before. Get some of the mat, the heavier gel medium. I'm going to go around here like this. I think I will put it on this side so it sticks together better. Take it, put it 
put a bunch on. And string. Okay, we got some leftover string here. I'm gonna punch it up a little bit so it looks like it's going around. And then I can go like this. I think. I'm going to put a bunch of gel medium. I think I'm going to lift this a little bit so I can tuck the string underneath in the corner. So it looks like it's going around. I don't want it to go my, my paper to go flat, real flat. I want to be able to see my paper in in a dimensional um, size, not flat. So then when you just hide it under there a little bit. Make sure that's good and down. Then you can make some folds. Probably easier ways of doing this. You just have to kind of play with it. I would suggest if you want it, this to be framed, I would probably play with some newspaper um, on a separate. Um, just try it out. See what you can get to do, to do it. Takes a little bit of uh, playing around. Okay, let's try that. Play, Joan, just play.
Thanks, Kevin. Okay, so I could put this across here too if I wanted to. And then where did I put that big roll? Hmm. Where the heck did I put that? Too much on my table. Can't find anything. Huh. Don't know where I put my string now. <laughs> oh my goodness sakes. You know, maybe I won't put that on because I can't find my... Where the heck did I put it? For Pete's sakes. I guess I could just tie a knot. I have two pieces of string and I don't know where I put my other one. I could just do that. Make sure you got enough on the. Just remember this dries clear, so don't get worried that you can't see it. It does dry clear. And you could put all kind. you could put a button on that would be cute. A little button there holding it. That would be really cute. All right, so we need to put some shading in there on the uh, This is just a glaze, basically. Be a little darker on the bottom here and on this side. And now that has to dry, and then we can fix the This is a hyacinth, the bulb.
here. So you could put, you know, um, some kind of background could be on it. Like you could use um, stenciling if you wanted to. That would be cute. Or stamping. Just a minute. Can stick a button on it. wood button or I've got these too. A little green button. What one do you like? Oh, come on, Janet. You do fantastic watercolor. I've seen your stuff. <laughs> you want this one instead? This, this one? Cute. So we just put some matte medium or gel medium. You need heavy duty gel medium for this stuff. Load it on and then you can just stick it on. And it'll stick. No green? <laughs> Jeez. Nothing? <laughs> this one. It's cute. Do what you want. <laughs> All right. Now we could put, I got some more stuff here. I could put words down. What do you think? Should we use some of this?
Let's see. Here's this. I don't know what it says. There. Made with love. What's that one say? Or Trees. That might be cool. Sponge. And maybe mm, color. A light green or blue. I have a really, really, really pale blue. Almost, it's a bluey lavender, so. See how it works. There. You think? Um, three now. About fifteen minutes. Okay. I just took a minute. Okay.
So we'll dry that. That's cute. And I'm just going to put a, a little bit darker in here, just along the bottom now, where it would be darker. wanting to resist where the medium is. There. See? It's cute. So there's the acrylics. And the newspaper. And this is the watercolor and ink you like the dirt <laughs> so the two different looks but i like them both now i could have taken the same stencil and then the same background on the watercolor and use watercolor or I could spray it, too, with um, some kind of a spray that I have, like a Lindy spray or something. That's right. Sunny skies ahead. <laughs> but it's cute. So either way, there, like, there is a difference as far as the pen. You see, it's a little more um, illustrative, I guess you would say, with the pen, this this one here whereas this one's a little more painterly so it depends the look you you like i like both of them you like the, the watercolor that is cute i i do love watercolor uh, pen, ink and wash they are now if i were by myself I would probably be doing this very detailed. That's just how I, I like detail. <laughs> but it would take me way too long to stream. 
But I love this. This is cute. And, and these would be really cute in a frame. You could do it. Um, I think it was Devin said you could do a series of these. So you could do um, hyacinths and daffodils and tulips and um, any kind of bulb, actually. Um, this is one I did off stream. So I saw this arrangement with the um, cabbage and I thought that would make a really cool picture. So this is the one I did for that. Um, I did film it. I'll probably be putting it for a class and it's beginner friendly girls. It's not difficult, it's beginner friendly. Yeah. So I'm getting there. So they're really, really neat ideas. So use what you have. You could do these in marker too, if you wanted to. But I like adding a little dimension, a little bit of um, collage with my, well, again, it's mixed media. <laughs> I can't help myself. So I'll probably be on again this weekend. Um, I'm not sure when. Um, I see that there's a, a lot more people uh, streaming now that they've got time to. So um, I don't know if the evening would be. When would you like evenings or days for me to stream? What time of day? Evenings are slower with the streamers. Oh, okay. Just stream when you can. True, Janet. Tuesday again. Yeah, I could do that. Sure. Six. six ish is best for people if i do streams in the evening okay i may just do that then so if you're watching make sure you ring the bell so you'll get notifications um i don't know if any of you streamers have noticed the um YouTube announcement about them laying off some of their workers and that your videos may not be, may be taken down accidentally, they say. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So, yeah, I'll probably be doing more of these. I want to get back into doing more mixed media stuff. So I'll let you guys go, and I'll see you soon. Maybe we can start a series, or we can work on our folders. <laughs> True. And um, stay positive. Be nice to each other. This is the time where helping out your neighbor and your um People that can't get out um, is important. And also stay creative just to get your mind to relax and focus on something else. So it means we'll be a creative thing. <laughs> Janet. <laughs> uh.
Oh, dear. <laughs> All right, I'll let you guys go. Have a good day. See you guys.